The Yeltsin administration in Russia is currently perceived ambivalently by many. Some people idolize him, while others recall the challenging times of the 1990s. Nevertheless, many believe that the Yeltsin regime was more democratic than the current one and often idolized Russian democracy in the 90s. In reality, there are numerous questions about the democracy during Yeltsin's year. And in this video we will discuss what went wrong with democracy in the 90s in Russia. During Yeltsin rule, the White House shelling occurred in 1993 a couple of years into his presidency. A conflict arose between the Russian Supreme Soviet and Boris Yeltsin regarding the further development of Russia. Yeltsin attempted to push market reforms, while the Supreme Soviet refused to support all of his initiatives. The tension escalated to the point where both sides were sidelining each other from power. Initially, Yeltsin issued a decree to dissolve the consuls, and soon after, the consul declared the cessation of the president's power. All of this resulted in a severe political crisis that was resolved through the use of force. The law enforcement agencies sided with Yeltsin, leading to street clashes, loss of lives, and ultimately the storming of the White House and town shootings. After these events, the Supreme Soviet was dissolved and a new constitution was adopted. The activities of the Supreme Court, which supported the Supreme Soviet, were suspended. Following a new law in 1994, the court lost the right to initiate cases and assessed the constitutionality of officials' actions. Thus, the Supreme Court lost part of its independence. Yeltsin failed to reach an agreement with one of the branches of power and essentially eliminated it with the help of the military. Clearly, this approach cannot contribute to democracy and the primacy of democratic institutions in the country. Essentially, the events of 1993 put an end to the real separation of powers in Russia. It's interesting that even back then, various journalists and politicians proposed a compromise, suggesting early elections for the consul and president, but Yeltsin was not willing to accept it. And of course, the members of the Supreme Soviet stood their ground. It's worth noting that these events also led to the drafting of a new constitution, creating a new legislative body, the State Duma, which still exists and expanded the president's powers. Thanks to these changes, Russia essentially became a presidential republic, and the latter plays a significant role today. It's precisely because of these changes during Yeltsin's presidency that Putin was able to acquire so much power. The next unpleasant episode for Yeltsin and his democracy were the 1996 elections. In these elections, the main candidates were Yeltsin, who had by then lost his popularity in all ratings, and Zyuganov, the leader of the Communist Party, who was gaining popularity against the backdrop of the processes in the 90s. A year early, Russia had parliamentary elections, where the Communists garnered 22% of the votes and became the leading party in the parliament. As for the presidential elections, the pre-election campaign was extremely dirty. Yeltsin was supported by all the oligarchs in the country, who practically controlled all the media. Thus, a campaign to discredit Zuganov began on all channels. Blatant slander, fabricated facts, and propagandistic tricks were frequently used. Allegedly, if the communists won, civil war and famine would ensue. When it came to Yeltsin, the discourse was only positive. His health condition, which included a heart attack and difficulty in mobility, was often concealed from the general public due to fears that it might diminish his ratings. While Zyuganov had some media support, it was limited in quantity and lacked sufficient coverage. Over a million dollars was spent on Yeltsin's campaign, circumventing existing legislation. His campaign was essentially financed all the books. For instance, the case of Xerox Box is well known, where members of Yeltsin's campaign were left with half a million dollars in cash, and the origin of these funds remains unclear to this day. So this manipulation led to irregularities in the elections. Miraculously, Yeltsin won the first round of elections. To secure victory in the second round, he managed to enlist the support of presidential candidate General Lebet, who garnered an impressive 15% of the vote. Yeltsin appointed him Secretary of the Security Council of Russia after the elections, but eventually removed him from office. The final significant event in the context of Yeltsin democracy was his resignation and the appointment of Putin as his successor. Although Yeltsin candidacy held during the 1996 elections, his health deteriorated further in 1999, making him unable to fulfill his duties. Therefore, Yeltsin proposed Putin as a candidate and temporarily appointed him as acting president. 
Prior to this, Putin had worked as a prime minister for five months. Putin entered politics thanks to Yeltsin, and primarily due to Yeltsin and his team, he won the 2000 elections. Some researchers argue that a non-prosecution deal was made between Yeltsin and Putin, often citing Putin's first decree, which was the on guarantees to the president of the Russian Federation who has ceased exercising his powers and to members of his family. Others maintain that there was no special deal, and the decree was a necessity for the transfer of power. Why Yeltsin chose Putin as his successor will be discussed in a separate video. In the end, thanks to Yeltsin, democratic tendencies in Russia were ultimately buried. In 1993, Yeltsin liquidated the legislative body using force, amended the constitution to expand his powers, and in 1996 participated in the elections using dirty tactics and falsifications. Ultimately, he handed over his powers to Putin, who then seized power.